Welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing one type of numerical integration method known as Euler's method. This is one of the most straightforward of the numerical integration algorithms out there, but it will serve as a great example to give us some insight into what ODE45 is doing in the background in MATLAB. So as mentioned in our previous video, some differential equations are quite simple to solve. Take for example the differential equation I've spelled out here. The time derivative of the variable y is equal to y. And we're given the initial conditions that at time equal to 0, y equals 1. Given this differential equation, and given this initial condition, we could simply write out what the exact solution is of y of t. And that ends up being the exponential of t. I'm not going to go into the detail of how to solve this exact solution, but I want it there as reference. And I've plotted this exact solution right here on the right in blue. But let's suppose we didn't know this exact solution or how to get it for that matter. How could we possibly estimate this exact solution numerically given what we know? Well, we know that at time equal to zero, that the position is equal to one. That's given by our initial condition. And we also know by our differential equation that the slope dy dt is equal to y. So at this position, it must be equal to one. I'm going to go ahead and make this into a table because we're going to start predicting forward in time and estimating what this exact solution may be. So to start, that says that at this point here, at time equal to 0 and at y equal to 1, there is a slope of 1. So if I were to draw a line with a slope of 1 here, it would look something like this. Now I want to take a step in time, projecting forward, and repeat this process. So let's take a delta t or a step of 2. So if I were to take a step of 2, graphically, we can see that this would leave us at point 3, y equal to 3. But numerically, we could solve for this as well. If I were to take a delta t of 2, that means that I now have a t equal to 2, and my slope that I was basing this projection off of was 1. And remember, that's rise over run. So if I'm going to run 2, I must rise 2 as well. So my y position would be 2 plus 1, which is 3. Well, at this point, my slope must be 3. And I've accomplished this again by taking a delta t, or a step size, equal to 2. Now, if I want to do the same thing and take a step size of 2 forward, a slope of 3 looks something like this. So if I step forward 1, I must rise 3. So if I step forward 2, I must rise 6. So graphically, it would look something like this. And numerically, we can fill in the blanks. So we step forward 2 again. That resulted given a slope of 3 and a rise of 6. 6 plus 3 is 9 and the slope at this point would be 9. And I could carry on forward and go further out in time. And this is an estimate of our exact solution. You might be looking at this and saying, well, this red line doesn't line up very closely to the blue, so what kind of estimate is that? Well, the reason that they're so far off is that we took a very large step size, a step size of 2 seconds. Now, if I refine that step size and bring it down, let's repeat this process given a smaller step size, you'll find that it gets closer to the exact solution. So we'd start with the same initial condition, but let's now take a step size of 1. Well, if I take a step size of 1, again, a rise over run, so this is going to be a difference of 1. So this would be 2, leading us to a slope of 2 at that point. So starting from that same point, now taking a step size of 1, that would land us right here to start. And this is a delta t equal to 1. Let's repeat the process. So if I were to step now to 2, given a slope of 2, a delta t of 1, add 2 to y, that would leave me at 4. 
So now my slope is going to be 4. So having a step size of 1 with a slope of 2 would land me here. And moving forward to 3, step size of 1 with a slope of 4, add 4 to the other, that's going to be 8. So that means that at this position, step size is 1, slope is 4, puts me at position 8. And I could repeat this one more just so that we have the full extent. At point four, step size of one with a slope of eight leads me to a rise of eight. Eight plus eight is 16. And the slope here would be 16 moving forward. So here's my estimate now using a step size of one. And you can imagine as the step size gets smaller and smaller, this accuracy of my estimate is gonna get closer and closer to the exact solution. Now you may be thinking, that sounds like a pain in the butt. I don't want to do this for smaller and smaller step sizes, and it's tough to do by hand. But luckily, computers are great at this. That's where numerical methods really, really come into play, is that a computer can easily churn through a bunch of numbers and come up with that estimate. Now, I've gone ahead and done that in MATLAB, and this is what that looks like. So here I've incremented my step size. I have step size of two, which we had laid out, step size of one, 0 0.5, 0 0.1. And you can imagine as this gets closer and closer to zero, as this limit approaches zero, we get closer and closer to our exact solution. Now we've been talking about this development of an estimation kind of in this table format, but let's talk about it a bit more algorithmically. Essentially what we're doing is derived from the definition of what a slope is. If you recall, the slope of a function, call it y dot of t, is equal to the limit as delta t approaches zero of y t plus delta t minus y t all over delta t. This is simply rise over run as that run approaches zero. So up top we have our rise, so y of t plus delta t minus y of t. And on the bottom in the denominator here, we have delta t or our run. Now, let's forget about delta t approaching zero for a minute. Let's say that we know that delta t is some finite number. So let's get rid of that limit. And if we rearrange things, we could write out what yt plus delta t is. So from this equation, we can say that yt plus delta t is simply equal to y of t plus this finite delta t times y dot at t. And this is an incredibly simple equation that stems from the definition of taking a derivative, but it's extremely powerful. What this says is that I can predict the future. I can tell you what y is, some delta t later, if I only know my current position or my current y of t, how far I'm stepping, and what my slope is at this current time. And those are all things that we're given. Looking back up to the original problem statement, we see that we're given some initial y, so that would be this number here. We know how to get y dot. That's given by our differential equation. So that's our information here. And if we just have a known step size, delta t, we can predict what the next one will be. And then so on and so forth. So it's moving down this table. It's exactly what we were doing earlier. And this is a great concept. It says that as long as I know a starting position, how to get my slope, and how far I'm stepping, I can predict the future. ODE45 does not use exactly Euler's method. It actually relies on something known as Runge-Kutta 4-5. However, the premise is the same. All that is needed is a starting position and how to get the slope. We'll talk more about ODE45 in our next video and how to start implementing it in MATLAB. Thank you.